Rawdon was sent away to the works for routine maintenance. He found being confined to the workshops was quite boring. On occasion he was let out for tests. Trains would pass by and they would greet Gordon as they went along. Gordon normally couldn't reply, but he did his best to smile back. While he was away, Henry and James took charge of his mainline duties. The responsibility went straight to their smoke boxes. But surprisingly, it was Henry who boasted the most. One morning, Henry was preparing for the first train of the day. He was chatting with James, who was grumpily shunting nearby. The passengers said I was even better than Gordon, he bragged. A class act, they said. Maybe the fat controller will come to his senses and make this change permanent. You know, Henry, said James, I share this job with you and get all the same compliments. Who's to say that I couldn't be Gordon's replacement? Huh. You, chortled Henry, you can barely climb hills as it is. It still amazes me how you can drag yourself over, you and your tiny wheels. James's boiler pressure suddenly shot up. I've banished so far, the weather has been quite dry. Not only that, interrupted Henry, but who would trust a small dinky engine like you? You're only fit to be a toy. Children would love you, being that you're so bright and splendid, wouldn't they? <laughs> Said Henry, smirking. James went red, hissing with anger. Dinky? A toy? Ow! Goodness, look at the time. Excuse me, James. I've got a passenger train to take. Play nicely with those trucks, won't you? And with that, Henry puffed away laughing. Later, Henry backed down onto his train. He was just about to shut his eyes when the station master walked up to him. Wake up, Henry. You're on the wrong platform, he said. Henry was confused. This is the Express, isn't it? Of course this is the right platform. Well, it is the Express, but you aren't the engine pulling it. There's been a change of plans. The fat controller's decided that you're to take that train over there. Has no one told you yet? This is the first any of us has heard of it, his driver replied. Henry stared for a moment, still confused. He listened carefully to what seemed to be. Children, he gasped. The station master laughed. The school wanted a train for a class trip. I hear it's for a history lesson of sorts. Are you telling me that there is an entire train filled with tiny little brats? And just who is taking this train anyway? Who else would it be? Boomed a familiar voice. There strode in Gordon, fresh out of the works. Sorry to ruin your fun, dear Henry, but it's time to stretch my wheels and reclaim what is rightfully mine. <laughs> Henry was speechless. He didn't expect Gordon to return so suddenly, and he certainly didn't expect to act as a chaperone to children. The big engine slunk away from the express and towards the other train, muttering to himself. Never mind, soothed his driver. It's a special train. You were specially chosen for the job. No one else. That's something, isn't it? Henry grunted and ignored him completely. He bumped the coaches roughly and listened to the rambunctious kids running across the platform. He sighed and tried to shut his eyes again until he overheard a small boy talking about him. Teacher was right. We are riding an artifact today. And the others giggled with him. Henry just snorted. It was a long journey, and a noisy one at that. People would turn heads as Henry passed, but for all the wrong reasons. The children shouted out of the windows, watching towns fly by, while Henry snarled in front. Steady, called his driver. You'll bump the passengers. But Henry didn't care. He just wanted to finish as soon as possible. He was looking forward to a rest when they reached the end of the line. They reached Vickerstown early, where James smugly waited. He had already heard the news. Well, 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 James guffawed. I thought you wanted to take charge of the express, not be a school bus. <laughs> Perhaps it was lucky for James that the guard's whistle blew before Henry could say anything. The coaches were taken away. The teacher walked her class down the road, and Henry made his way towards the water column. He was sizzling nicely as the crew looked him over. You're making me nervous. What's the fuss? inquired Henry. Oh, we heard something hit us when we passed through the tunnel. I'm just checking to see everything is in working order, said the fireman. Unfortunately, they did find something. 
A clod of mud in his whistle, to be exact. It was too much for Henry. Oh, bother, what could be worse? How are we going to take this circus of a train if I can't whistle? He groaned. I'll be stuck here and they'll laugh at me again. It's against regulations to take a train without a whistle. But there's no other engines, are there? Sighed the fireman. He looked around. The station and yard were barren. That's it then. We'll just have to do our best to mend it, proclaimed the driver. You tell the teacher what's up. The teacher was puzzled. She looked around at her class, tapping her foot. I'm truly sorry, ma'am, but rules are rules, you know, he said. Oh, of course, she said. You take your time. I only wonder what I could do with the children in the meantime. I don't think they'd like to go back to the museum. There's only so much they care to listen to, I think. Just then, the fireman had an idea. He led the teacher in the class to the yard, where Henry and his driver stood. When the big engine saw the children, he went as pale as a ghost. Come on now, Henry, you've got a story or two, haven't you? prodded the fireman. I'm not a radio, you know. You're old like a radio, said a little girl. My daddy listens to stories on the radio every day. Please do tell us a story. Well, uh, we, we haven't the time. We'll be late, he stammered. We've already gone to the museum and then some. They didn't have many interesting stories that the children liked, the teacher said. Please, there must be something. He was met with a crowd of demanding chants, children and adults alike. Even his driver stopped work to join in. There's no rest for the weary, old fellow, the driver commented. And there's no sympathy for me either, grumbled Henry. At last, he finally gave in. And so Henry told stories of tunnels, naughty children, engines with scarves, elephants, and even forests. The children would ask as many questions as they could think of, and Henry would stop the story to answer each one. Everyone sat captivated as he went on and on. They laughed a lot, even Henry. He had forgotten all about his clogged whistle until his driver climbed down from the boiler. All's well, he said. What a relief. We'll be home in no time. As Henry whistled out of the station, his coaches gave a noisy reply. It was the children. Every time he whistled at a signal box or greeted another engine, the children would holler back. Henry's school special turned heads once again, all the way back to the big station. Thank you for the lovely day, said the children. We'll tell all our friends what a kind and useful engine you are. With that, the teacher and her class left, leaving Henry with a cheery grin. Come again soon, he called. Not too bad, eh? nudged the driver. Those children love their day out because of you. That night, the sheds were full once again, and Gordon was gloating about his successful day back. Well, Henry, I suspect your day at the zoo was a special one, Gordon chuckled. He was dead miserable, sniggered James. A right grump, weren't you, Henry? I had a lovely day, thank you, Gordon. Oh, and we're so glad you're back, Henry said happily. Gordon and James stared in silence. They looked at each other, and then back at the strange engine who looked like Henry. Won't you miss the express? Gordon asked. Of course, Henry replied. It was nice to help while you were gone, but I think your passengers missed you. I know my passengers would miss me if I were gone. Your passengers? James questioned. What are you talking about, Henry? Gordon laughed. Before they realised, Henry had gone happily to sleep. And for the next few days, the other engines noticed that Henry had a very noticeable spring in his puff. <laughs> <laughs>